News at Sunrise. It is one minute before five o'clock and here's a look at some of our morning headlines. We start with no classes for students at Clark College in Vancouver again today. Faculty walked out yesterday demanding better pay. The college says it has raised this offer to the union from $1.4 million collectively to more than $4 million. Forest Grove fire crews had their hands full with a barn fire last night that started around 8 o'clock on Vandehay Road. Officials say someone who lived on that property tried to battle the fire with a garden hose, but firefighters took over once they got there and were able to put that fire out. We know that none of the goats or the horses that lived in that barn were hurt, but what we don't know yet is how that fire started. The college football season ended last night. Brenda, did you see the game? I saw part of it, my LSU Tigers. Yes, they won. <laughs> I did not see any of this game, admittedly, but I do know that LSU beat Clemson for the national title. And once that game was over, the Associated Press put out its final college football poll. The Oregon Ducks finished the year ranked fifth in the nice. country on the heels of their Rose Bowl victory. So those are, again, some of our Tuesday morning headlines. But Brenda, what else do we have coming up on Sunrise? Funny you should ask. We have a ton coming up. A unique place to sip and stay in Oregon's wine country. So we're getting a tour of the trailers at the Vintages in this morning's Sunrise 60 Plus. Being the underdog is, is, is something like from a movie standpoint, that's the person, that's the team that you root for. Hey, we're rooting, rooting for them too. Leica Studios in Hillsboro is up for an Oscar for its movie Missing Link. We are touring the studios to see where all the magic happens. That's coming up this morning at 545. And don't think we forgot about this. Oh no. <laughs> Weather is still the hot topic of conversation today on the Sunrise Show. And we have this on the west side right now. A live picture from Burnside and Skyline where yes, there is snow coming down. And yes, that snow is sticking a little bit on the road. So if you're out and about this morning or just step outside your door for us, you can take a picture if there is snow in your area. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can put that on social media. Use the hashtag KGW Sunrise. And I can tell you that Burnside view has changed since I even got right. into work at 3 o'clock this morning. So in light of all that, let's get the very latest this morning from meteorologist Rod Hill. Good morning. So good morning. Uh, you know, we are fearful that there will be accidents this morning. So please leave the door with that thought in mind and don't be a person involved in an accident. Again, that live shot right here from the sticking snow up in the West Hills. We've also had spots down low that at times have dropped down to freezing. That presents the possibility of surprise black ice. The radar, this was a passing shower, so the West Hills starting to see what was a decent little snow band break up. It's passing rain showers uh, in downtown Portland right now and then moving out to the east. Again, the green is rain and the other colors are generally snow. Here are the temperatures. Hillsboro 33. Again, worried about black ice out here. Coming into downtown Portland, it's 38 degrees. Salem Kaiser, you're holding in the mid 30s this morning to the bus stop we go. Generally, for most of us, this is a day that stays in the mid to upper 30s with passing snow showers and not enough moisture to really stack up in very many locations. We'll update what's going to happen tomorrow into Thursday coming up shortly. All right, Rod. Well, whether there was snow or no snow in your part of town, it was cold last night throughout the area. So Multnomah County opened up its severe weather shelters. There are a total of 2000 beds at three different shelters around the county. We'll let you know if they plan on opening again tonight. We do know this. Those shelters are always in need of donations. We're talking about things like winter hats, blankets, coats, even sleeping bags. So for more information on how you can help, Go to 211info.org. In the meantime, the possibility of widespread snow has a lot of people wondering what the traffic situation could be like, specifically if Portland plans to use salt on the roads. Peabot says yes, salt is part of the plan. Kristen Severance verifies when and where crews plan to use it this year. If you're new to Portland, you may be surprised to learn that crews just started using salt on the roads in 2017. It's back this year, so let's verify some common questions and answers about when and where they use salt on the road. So number one, where does Peabot use road salt? The answer here, roads most prone to closure during winter storms, including steep hills, hospital routes, and downtown. So there's this great map on the Portland Bureau of Transportation site 
and it shows you in real time where they use plows and de-icer and salt when it snows. So you can see the purple area, that is where they plan to use salt. So here is the West Hills. Here's a really steep hill at Fremont and 33rd, and then they'll also plan to salt in the Mount Tabor area. I definitely bookmark this map or check KGW.com. I'll make sure it's on there. Our next question, when will salt be used on the road? It really depends on temperature. So according to PBOT, salt works great at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can lose some of its effectiveness below 20 degrees. Our next question, what else does PBOT use to treat roads? Sand, de-icer, and plows. Plenty of that all on standby. And our last question, I threw this in there because we got this a lot last year. Who was responsible for clearing and salting the sidewalks? Very simple answer here. You are. Property owners are responsible for clearing their sidewalks, and if someone does fall and get hurt on your sidewalk, you could be held liable. Do you have something you want us to verify? Let us know. Email us at verify at kgw.com. And since the forecast is constantly changing and our KGW weather team is on top of it, you should get updates from them several times a day. And you can do that by using our KGW app or go to our social media pages. We're going to get to one of our other top stories right now. This one comes from Albany, where police are searching for 37 year old Tiffany Lazan. There you see a picture of her. Her family says the last time they saw her was mid November and the last time she texted them was on Christmas Day. Since then, there's been no signs of her. Investigators have talked with Tiffany's estranged husband, Craig Lazan. He told them that Tiffany had plans to move to Washington, but her mom says no way. I don't buy it. Not at all. He can say whatever he wants. He could say that he, she went to Washington, but she didn't leave with nothing. Um, I'm worried. I'm sick to my stomach. And it's just like, it's just not her. Like she just wouldn't leave like this. And it's just heartbreaking. So if you do have any information about where Tiffany may be, you're asked to call Albany Police. We have some new information now about the dad and two kids swept out to sea near Cannon Beach this weekend. The kids didn't survive and the dad is recovering from hypothermia. We now know the Stiles family is from Portland. This is a photo of them, including dad Jeremy and kids Lola and William. Jeremy was carrying the kids along a trail off the beach when a sneaker wave got them. Lola died and the search for William has been called off. People who live nearby in Manzanita will honor the family with a vigil tomorrow evening. It starts at five o'clock at the Hoffman Center. Meanwhile, if you want to help the Stiles family, there's a fundraiser set up for their expenses. You can find that information on KGW.com. Portland police officers helped save the lives of three people after a nasty crash left them trapped in a burning car. That car flipped on Southeast Powell yesterday right under the I-205 freeway. The officers quickly used a fire extinguisher to try and put out the flames and then started breaking windows to help the three people inside escape. All three are okay. Police say the crash happened when another car cut them off and the driver flipped swerving to avoid a wreck. Portland's new police chief, Jamie Resch, commended those officers for their heroics. The owner of a bookstore in Northeast Portland is hoping that people will keep their eyes out and help him find 100 rare books that were stolen from his store. Burglars broke into Passages Bookshop on January 2nd. They smashed display cases and made off with first editions, books that were signed by authors, and some rare prints from the 1800s. So we have a list of the stolen books that you can find right now on the news links section of our KGW app. Okay, we want to get back to weather for a second, uh, not talk about here in the metro area, but up at Mount Hood, because this weekend marked the first big snow event up there. This is video that our evening crew took coming back from government camp yesterday. ODOT crews have been hard at work trying to keep up with the snow, but the conditions did get the best of some drivers. We saw a few people that came up and they didn't have chains and they were sliding all over the road. So for the people that aren't using the chains, not a good idea. Wind made the conditions even more treacherous over the weekend. They say it pushed over about 50 snow loaded trees, knocking down power lines right near government camp. Wow. You know, Brenda, you and I could continue to talk about the weather by ourselves, but wouldn't this conversation be heightened <laughs> by the presence of a weatherman? 